Broad Channel, an island in Jamaica Bay, is sinking. Tides in the bay are rising and storms are causing more damage. The residents of this Queens neighborhood are on track to become the first New Yorkers displaced by climate change. I've lived in Broad Channel since, um, I guess, 17 years. But uh, my father and my brother, oh, my father always had this piece of property. And my brother had a house about six blocks that way. Yeah. Once you live here, if you see a views like this and living on the water, it's hard to picture just moving back to Queens and Glendale where we all came from because, you know, open space. So it's, it's beautiful, but it's getting harder. You know, it's just getting harder. We spoke to Don Reapy about the rising water level in the neighborhood. Don works for the American Littoral Society, a nonprofit dedicated to protecting the littoral zone, the naturally occurring habitats that start on the coast and extend into the shallower parts of the ocean. I guess over my 35 years, probably the tide has risen another four or five, maybe even six inches. Uh, we figure about, they say about two inches, uh, an inch and a half to two inches a decade, <clears throat> that it's increasing. So now, a couple of times a year, we have seven foot tides, which we didn't have, you know, 35 years ago. If you look out over there, there's a couple of marshes, and that's all created. So that's a marsh that uh, the Corps of Engineers brought the sand in. They put it at the right elevation. We planted all this by Tyner. So one is that 10 acre plot there has over 150,000 plugs of Spartina alternaflora. So it's all, you know, uh, growing together and we're getting a nice substantial uh, new marsh there. We have another 20 acre piece behind that. So we're working on restoring these marshes that have declined over the years, that have eroded. Well, the first thing is the Corps of Engineers has to find clean sand to bring in here. They pump it in, they bring a barge in, they, they bring a big pipe in, they slurry the sand on the marsh, then they have laser guided bulldozers that will grade it to the right elevation so the plants will be inundated twice a day but they'll have a drying out period so you don't want to have it too low or too high so when it's that elevation then we we put a big fence around it to try to keep the geese out and we planted the whole thing over the last five or six years out there and we're hoping that over time they'll all grow together and it'll form a new stable marsh um, and those marshes are invaluable to wildlife because a lot of the fin fish, the uh, marine invertebrates spend part of their life cycle in these marshes. And they also act as a big buffer to the community. So if you have a substantial marsh in front of your community, that's gonna, you know, take the, the you know, the, the wave action and will dissipate it. So those, those are the thoughts that's going on. The city has a program called Build It Back, uh, where they're uh, building uh, houses higher, another 10 feet higher in elevation. So they jack up the house and they, <clears throat> they uh, use the downstairs as either a carport or as a basement. And people are living, you know, 10 feet higher now. So a lot of people opted to do that. Those of us living right on the edge weren't, couldn't be in that program. Um, it's to be too difficult to jack up this whole house, so we just have to, uh, you know, live with it. Hope there's not another Sandy, uh, but over time, it's going to be a problem, you know. You know, they just raised our block three feet. They raised the street itself three feet. We raised our house on top of the raised street, and last week, we only came up the block a little bit, you know. But I mean. Before the street was repaired, it probably would have been about three feet of water, but I don't know if we're going to beat this battle. Um, I guess if you look at life, uh, I'm sort of a, a rationalist, I say, no matter what you do, at the end of life you die anyway. But what are you going to sit around and, and you know, wring your hands and cry? You do what you can. Hopefully the next generation will figure out something better.